So you just picked up Guilty Gear Strive, and even though you're familiar with fighting games, you might be thinking to yourself, whoa, this is a lot. There's a lot more mechanics to this game than I thought there was. But not to worry, I put together for you the ultimate beginner's guide for Guilty Gear Strive. Made by a beginner for beginners. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Take it one step at a time. So I'm gonna go ahead and assume you're not an absolute toddler and you have at least a, a one minute in the game. You understand there's punch, there's kick, there's slash. As long as you understand at least that I think we got a good foundation to go off of here. In no particular order, I'm gonna be going over the mechanics for you guys. The first thing that I wanna go over and touch on is that burst meter you see up top by our life bar. So the burst meter can be used both defensively and offensively. Now you might be thinking, well, what does that even mean? Well, think about a burst kind of like a, a, a breaker from from Mortal Kombat or other games that I like that where they they allow you to essentially break yourself out or burst yourself out of a combo as you're getting just comboed or bodied by your opponent. Now to do a burst, it's gonna be different for anybody because not everyone's on controller or a fight stick or even PC. So burst is typically for controller players, for an example, it's gonna be your R1 plus any button at the same time. But again, it differs for everybody. So go into controller settings and kind of see what your burst button is. Now to show you what a defensive burst looks like in a fight, we're gonna set our opponent up here to CPU. And let, just kind of let them combo us here and then you guys will see us burst. Big blue burst will happen. We'll escape the combo in the middle of even if we're in the air. It will use our entire burst, but we'll show you what it looks like here. So let's go ahead and get comboed here. There we go. You know, see how we just kind of we punished them it basically got our opponent off of us allowing us to kind of reset the field reset the stage and go okay now what's our play now we'll go over the tension bar you see in the bottom right and left corners there later but they have awesome uses and a lot of uses now if you don't have any tension gauge and you want to get tension gauge fast you can use the your offensive burst to do so keep in mind when you do that you are using your burst screener so you won't have it to use it defensively later if you start to get bodied so you see here we have no tension at the bottom left there we do have full burst though so as we are being offensive to our opponent we can then burst and it'll do a gold burst giving us all the tension on the offensive. so now right there we have our full tension so now we can use our tension gauge for whatever we want to and just like defense burst it pushes your opponent off of you even though you were the one being defensive again to kind of reset the field now that is your burst i wanted to start that off just so you have an idea of like what that means and kind of we'll touch on tension later but to kind of introduce you to the tension gauge down there we see there just real quick we have 50 percent 100 percent so basically you have two uses once you get your bar up to past that halfway mark you have one use and then once it's full you now have two uses the next thing i want to go over for guilty gear strive is their move list format so for an example guilty gear strive they use normals you know like punch kick slash heavy slash and whatever and then they have their specials specials here are the key to extending and doing combos in Guilty Gear Strive. You can do some combo strings with just normals, but if you utilize your specials, you're going to do far more and better combos for uh, any character, really. So for an example, for Kai, we have our punch, we have our slash, we have our heavy slash, but we also have our specials kind of like the o'clock. And then we also have our stun dipper, which starts off as a low, and that is just down, forward, kick i say kick because to me kick is x so you know there's punch slash kick this is down forward kick we have our down back kick we have our down forward slash so these specials every character has their own specials and every character has viable specials that you need to be using in your move set in your combos in your defense everything speaking of normals a lot of people don't know when they first get into guilty gear strive that slash has two different hits so if you're not like this close to your opponent you do what's called a far slash kai's looks like this just like a nice poke now if we're in the face of our opponent we're close we do a close slash where he won't poke them he'll actually physically slash them and that's just me standing still pressing triangle on my playstation so kind of depending on your space between you and your opponent your slash button does change properties again depending on how close you are so you need to keep that in mind so when you close the distance between you and your opponent and you're this close you got to know that you're not going to be doing this you're going to be doing this like most fighting games guilty your strive has what's called lows and overheads meaning that if your opponent is blocking blocking and you just can't get a hitting 
you're doing all these normal hits. They're not essentially overhead hits, but they're just like normal upper body hits. You can do a low hit, thus breaking their guard. So if we're there guarding a lot, you can do actually a starting low combo string and get a whole combo off by just hitting them low. So for an example, all of that just because we hit them low and caught them off guard. So the opposite is also true here, right? So if our opponent is blocking low a lot and also our mids, you know, are just crouching and blocking low a lot, what you want to do is an overhead, again, breaking their guard. And Guilty Gear Strive has an awesome mechanic called Dust. Dust is an overhead hit for every character. So if you see him blocking low a lot, just dust him, catch him off guard. You can also grab him out of the blocks. Got to touch on the dust mechanic just for a minute here. A side note, it's really cool mechanic for Guilty Gear Strive is if you hold Hold down the dust button. It does take a little longer to come out, but in doing so, if you hold up at the same time and you're, you're dusting them, you're gonna launch your opponent into the air, allowing you to do a mid-air combo before you launch back down to the ground. Here's what it looks like. You can hold dust, hold up, launch them in the air. Then we can do our combo in the air. Then we land back on the ground. So you really want to make your offense, your combo, your set plays, honestly, kind of a mixture of both lows and overheads. You really want to keep your opponent guessing, you know, are they going to go low? Are they going to go overhead? What are they going to do? So if I see him blocking overhead a lot, I'm going to run up, do a low hit, get a combo off real quick. If I see him blocking low a lot, I'm going to go up, do a dust real quick, catch him off guard, maybe throw him. Just mix it up a lot. Also, real quick, guys, don't forget to subscribe here for more content because we have new videos Monday and Friday and we stream at least twice a week. Not only does Guilty Gear have normals and specials, they have overdrives or you might recognize the name more as supers mortal kombat has x-ray smash brothers has final smashes well guilty gear strive has overdrives now this is where the tension gauge at the bottom comes into play for the first time in this little training gear to do an overdrive you have to have at least 50 percent tension because using an overdrive uses at least 50 percent of your tension gauge so you see for an example kai has sacred edge which is down forward down forward punch but in doing so we send out a powerful multi-hit projectile attack it puts the opponent for us into shock state on contact it does have a quick recovery and a quick startup as well so if we want to throw that out there we can just do it but you see there our tension gauge is now at 50 percent because we had 100 we used 50 percent of it same thing goes for our ride the lighting which we can do in the air by the way as well this one's utilized a little bit more and it does wall break. Now overdrives are great, especially if you can use them in a combo. They do massive damage. You got good recovery on them, especially if they're hit. And as you saw, they do wall breaks. They just got a lot of great properties to them that if you can hit them are very worthwhile. So for an example, I'll show you Kai's in a combo. So you saw how we popped their opponent in the air. Now they can't block that and we get a wall break and we did 208 damage. So you definitely want to utilize your overdrive as much as you possibly can in a fight because a lot of them have different properties. Some do damage, some do buff, some do other things. Now speaking of our tension gauge, there is another property that it has and a use that it has and that is for doing what's called Roman cancels. Now Roman cancels even to me took me kind of a minute to really understand but again coming from a beginner to you as a beginner I want to help you understand and then the best way that I learned as well. There are four Roman cancels. Purple Roman cancel, red, blue, and yellow. Now I'm not gonna lie to you, the one you're probably gonna use the most, in my opinion, is gonna be the red Roman cancel. Now the reason why the red Roman cancels is utilized the most, again in my opinion, is because the red Roman cancels allows you to extend your combos. And a lot of people that play fighting games typically play more offensively and extend your combos is a pretty offensive move, so allowing you to get more damage in or whatever it is. Now Roman cancel you press three of your attack buttons at the same time i mapped it to my l1 which i recommend you do too so it's a little bit easier to hit now to do a roman cancel you have to press your roman cancel at the same time your move connects so for an example here's a simple combo right this is a, a five hit combo right now if we want to extend that we can actually roman cancel right when that last fifth hit connects they will stay in the air we will get up and that allows us more time to extend the combo doing more hits so here it looks like here we're going to do our combo red roman cancel then extend our combo, thus getting nine hits and more damage. Now, purple Roman cancel is mainly used to help you recover if you miss a hit or you're a little late on the red Roman cancel. So for an example, we hit them, same combo, right? But now I'm gonna purple Roman cancel, allowing me to kind of recover a little bit faster than, than I would have, making me a little more safe. So if you recognize you missed a hit, you're like, oh, this move is not safe. You usually wanna do a purple Roman cancel and then help yourself, you know, maybe backdash or whatever it is to help yourself recover. It's got a couple more uses, but that's the biggest use that 
I found for I don't usually use purple a lot but I'll do I'll do it when I realize oh I made a mistake and I need to make sure that I'm safe on my mistake now the blue one is uh, kind of good for both offensive and defense if you see your opponent being more offensive to you for an example you can blue Roman cancel kind of stun them in their tracks and then kind of go up there either grab them or start your own combo it's more of a neutral Roman cancel so when you're on the ground you just walk around you, you can blue Roman cancel I'm not going to lie to you. I know there's a ton of uses for it. I don't use it that much. It's definitely got some great uses. But again, you're probably going to use red Roman Council or even purple a little bit more often than the blue one. Uh, I just don't see it. Uh, you know, there's very few far between uses for the blue Roman Council that I've found. But you might hear a pro go, oh, no, the blue Roman Council is the best one in the game. I don't care. I don't, I don't know. I don't care. Now, the yellow Roman Council is a defensive Roman Council. Now, you can't do it while you're in hit stun, but you can do it while you're blocking. So if your opponent's just going at you, hit after hit after hit, but you're blocking it all, blocking it all, blocking it all, and you don't have a burst, but you have tension you can yell the roman cancel kind of get him off you for a moment kind of reset the stage another way to reset the field essentially so again while you're blocking you want to do the roman cancel right when your opponent is going to hit you and the hit connects do the roman cancel you'll see what it looks like here right now so we're blocking here we're going to block everything roman yell the roman cancel reset it now we've grabbed them now we're on the offensive so as you saw there, as we were getting hit, we were blocking, we kind of yellow Roman cancel, hey, get off me, now what do I do? There's a lot more intricacy that I could get into when it comes to Roman cancels. Those are the quick beginner rundowns I want to give to you guys for that to kind of understand what Roman cancels really are and how to use them and which ones you're probably going to use more often. I use the yellow one sometimes when I really need to, but I'm not going to lie to you again, I really use the red Roman cancel a little bit more just because I'm more of an offensive player. Guys, real quick, let me know down below what characters in Guilty Gear Striver you liking do you have a main yet let me know down below another cool thing about guilty gear strive is it's got a running mechanic so a lot of fighting games i mean they do but you know you usually dash dash back whatever but guilty gear is pretty oppressive so it allows you to really put pressure on your opponent by having the run mechanic getting in their face maybe throwing them off guard maybe run up to and do a low maybe run up and just grab them you might not always want to run but you can you can dash forward dash back you can dash in the air for most characters you can double jump you can block in the air you can even grab in the air there's a lot of movement options you have both in the air and on the floor that allow you to kind of decide okay do i need to back up do i need to get in their face do i need to jump in what do i gotta do now a cool mechanic that i like in guilty gear strive is the wall break mechanic essentially you do enough damage on your opponent bounce them against the wall over and over again they will then latch onto the wall in stun position allowing you to hit them again breaking the wall and doing a map transition taking you to a new map and giving you bonuses for being the oppressor in that situation we do that enough you'll see that our opponent will be against the wall here see that they're on the wall now you saw that if we didn't hit them they just fall back down so if you see your opponent on the wall just hit him with anything really so they're on the wall just do it again do a transition and now we have what's called positive bonus you see our tension gauge with the arrows there our tension gauge is now filling up a lot faster allowing you to be more aggressive have more roman cancels to do you can do overdrives now wall breaks are a good option to do overdrives at this point because they, they can't block it so now you can do a free overdrive doing insane damage and a wall break Another thing that I love about Guilty Gear Strive as a beginner is it really helps you understand the flow of the game and kind of how the game works in a lot of different ways. And what I mean by that is you see on the main menu, we have the dojo and they have tutorials and missions. Missions are a great way as a beginner to go in there. And even though you watch this video, I recommend going in the missions because it really helps you physically do those small kind of dumb, intricate things that I was telling you about in this video. And there's like five, six worlds of the missions. There's a lot to do. Uh, you'll probably get the really good basics down the first two three worlds of missions and you have a really good foundation to build off from there but the biggest thing that i like as a beginner in guilty gear strive is once you have the basics down for the game and you kind of understand okay i can do normals into you know special moves into an overdrive i can start doing combos well it's really cool is they have a combo menu here you can search combos for your character that other people have made to help you go oh i never thought about that so for an example for kai we're going to just play his gather his combos and go in there and see oh what can kai do that i never thought about that this person did so for an example we press start here we have the combo recipe select we got five really good combos to kind of go off here you see the first one there just to help you understand oh when they block this just go up and grab them but here we have a pretty simple combo let's go ahead and pull that one up for you as you see here the title says mid screen for intermediate so it helps you go oh this is a not in the corner combo i can do this at mid screen i usually press triangle for the free practice mode and i take it one step at a time and i go okay this is going to be 
forward circle into down back X. So that tells me, okay, once I hit the counter on a forward heavy slash, I can do the, you know, down back kick. And then once that connects, I can do the standing heavy slash. So let's just do the, you know, one, two, three hits. When I was playing Kai in the very beginning, I had no idea that on a counter hit for a heavy slash that I could go into Founder Arc and then go into a heavy slash as well. I had no idea. And that's just three hits. So now let's do four. We can do two Founder Kicks after all that. So we're going to do this, heavy slash, Founder Arc again. I had no idea that you could probably even hit that. And then you can do more. You can end that with another forward heavy slash and then a Vapor Thrust. So let's just do the whole thing. I see you. We're on the wall now, what do we want to do? We can do the Vapor Thrust, yes, but we could really do an overdrive if we have enough meter. We could do just a hit. I recommend practicing these combo recipes two, three, four times. Make sure you get them, you hit them consecutively before it becomes, you know, you know, muscle memory and really get them down. And then in a fight, you hit a forward heavy slash counter and go, oh, I know what to do now. I can do the Founder Arc, and do a heavy slash. You start to really build these combos into your hands. Once you get that one down, go to the next one and then go, okay, this is a wall break in the corner here so I can do slash into forward heavy slash into a founder arc I can't recommend the dojo enough when it comes to tutorials missions trainings and then of course the combos we can search and even create your own combos but I found that searching and kind of seeing what have other characters what have other players come up with for my character that I had never even thought of and not only that some might click with you some might not but at least you'll know oh this 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 character can actually do this thing I'm not going to use it a lot but I know that they can if the situation ever occurs hopefully you enjoyed my beginner's guide for Guilty Gear Strive if you found it helpful make sure to give it a thumbs up and maybe even share with a friend that's also new to Guilty Gear subscribe for more content take it one step at a time and I'll see you guys in the next one